Um, I went to Goodwill today. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Goodwill. If you, you should Google Goodwill if you're not sure on why, but they kind of suck. But I do shop there on occasion so I can find cheap things. So, <laughs> I'm flipping through the paintings, uh, little portraits, prints, things like that. I'm just going through them. I'm picking through. I look at everything because I'm trying to find cool stuff. And sometimes you find really weird stuff in there. And I love it's weird true. stuff, okay? It's true. Um, so, <laughs> so there's like this, yeah, there's like, so there's this picture of the, the like Tuscan countryside and I'm like boring and pulled that off the shelf and there's something turned around backwards and I'm like, huh, why is it turned around? Usually they're pretty good about facing them forward. Well, I pull it off of the oh, shelf no. and it's like laying on top of a, an almost identical picture. Like these two pictures should have been together. These two Tus Tuscan countryside pictures. And right in the middle, turned away from like the public towards the wall, is the most cursed thing I've ever found at Goodwill. Oh, no. Oh, but she got it, though. Oh, Jesus! Oh, that is the worst. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. <laughs> about that. That's just cursed. That I lied. I, have, I lied. Curse. I have a newfound phobia. <laughs> <laughs> my, my phobia is that thing. I have a phobia it's, of okay, that so specific listener, photo I know you just got listener I know you just got like 10 seconds of us just like <laughs> guffawing at this it is a picture of a very well done it's a, actually a really well done picture like the shading is very nice and everything yeah lots of definition definite it is color. a clown with his tongue sticking out and he has like a pot with flowers on his head <clears throat> and when this episode comes out I'll post it on twitter so you all can yeah, see it. Yeah. Um, but it is insane. Uh, and I, I looked at it and said, that's cursed. Who would buy that? And then I walked halfway back towards the registers and turned around and picked it up. Because I could not <laughs> yeah. walk away from this picture. I legitimately had to bring this I'd home. I'd like to walk away from this picture. I'd like to imagine you said the exact words. What kind of crazy person would buy this and then turned around and there was just a mirror staring at you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I like legit, like I had to buy there was no getting out of buying that picture. Like it was it had to happen. I walked to I walked to the front of the store and it was like in my mind. It would not go away. So I'm not see, gonna lie, honestly, most though, like, people it just kinda of reminds me of the tragic clown. Most people yes. would take yes. that as a bad thing. <laughs> I, if it's you know, in your mind. I, oh, yeah. Man. Well, that's great. No, I think you all know me well enough to know that if if it's a cursed object, I have to own it. So she has to have it. This is fair. She Honestly, has to, try it out. to keep in mind, since we're about mm -hmm. to record for the podcast. Yeah, Marla, we'll let you know if Pogo pops up over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. while recording. <laughs> I'm just let saying. me know. <laughs> Hello, friends. My name is Jackson Chandler, and you're listening to the Sins of the Father podcast. sit in for is a hot dog a sandwich it is it is 100 percent. it is only a sandwich if the bun is split all the way down Jeez, yeah that split bun? that bun <laughs> but hold all right stop <laughs> <laughs> but is a hot dog a sandwich when i go and put it on two slices of bread because i cut oh, yeah. two different hot dogs in half and i yeah. put them on there Yes, that's absolutely a sandwich. It's a sandwich. I just want no, you to know. Not that's everything a, has to be experiment. something else. Actually, I'm sorry. I, I Sometimes you know things are just the things that they are. It's okay, a, Pogo. You guys would be giving Oswin existential crisis right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Oh yeah, our kids are having an existential crisis in the game, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> They're about to be. Speaking is of it which, a sandwich or is it? I mean, Vartosh already Speaking has Speaking of which, <laughs> hello friends. How's it going? Well, hey. 
Hello, oh, friends. I'm new here, and I'm suffering from an existential crisis. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Misconceptions <laughs> Podcast Network. Specifically <laughs> sent to the father. We're a lot more unhinged here. So you all find yourself currently standing amongst a huge crowd of shocked upper district citizens in Harvell as you just witnessed this masked figure take down three of the golems that protect the perimeter and the elevators leading up into this district by a single individual who then after their dramatic speech ignited what you could only assume were bombs across every chain that you could see that operated these elevators leading up to the top of the city. And as they left, there was a stunned silence amongst the crowd before you hear the crashing sound of metal as the elevators finally made contact with the ground in the lower district. Uh, 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 oh, 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 my, go- my goodness. Uh, what? Uh, he's hurting. Uh, they are hurting people. Uh, sh- what should sh- 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 we do? Is there a way to get down to where the elevators fell to? Or is that the only way down and now it's gone? From your collective times here, um, Ivalia, Rickett, and Bartosh, the only ways that you have gone from the upper district to the lower district were either through magical teleportation, the elevators, or, as you recall, One of your darkest experiences, the sewers. Leaping out of the sewers into a lake. (laughs) So, there is only two ways to get down. Oh no. (laughs) You either have to find someone with the means to open a gate to the lower districts, or venture down into the sewers once again. We don't remember how powerful the librarian is. (laughs) Dang it. (laughs) Now, let's be real here. There's a third way. I just don't think any of us have enough hit points to survive it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, Rickett has a feather fall. Oh, okay then. Oh, that that is true. How far of a fall is that? As people see uh, five teenagers just leap off the side of the wall. (laughs) And then slowly start falling. Yvalia is going to run towards the nearest elevator and she wants to look down and see what the hell happened. Like, what, what, is it, what does the aftermath of this look like? So you push your way through the crowd and run up to the gate where the elevator would rise and be raised up. It is currently lowered and was awaiting this elevator to reach the top before um, the sentries were going to raise using the mechanical devices and open the gate. So you could do that if you want. It's just a series of levers Mm -hmm. that would operate the gate to either um, open it or lower it. Yeah, so um, she's gonna run up to it, realize that she can't see anything because of this gate in the way, and like slap her hand on it, and like try to find how does it open. Like, but she's not... She's in such a panic that she doesn't even think to look for a mechanism to open it. So she's kind of, like, hitting it and, like, pulling on it and trying to get it to open. Uh, the rest... Let the re- Let me in. The rest of you do see your familiar... The familiar face of Avalia kind of dart out from the crowd, and you see her... You can tell she's in a panic, just kind of hitting stuff on this uh, control panel trying to open this gate but she cannot figure it out in her current state. Rickett, give me a perception check. I sure will. That is a 13. Um, so looking towards Evalia, you see 
her doing this and the gate she's at is the one that this uh individual was standing on top right. when they gave their speech and opened the portal and left you see oh, so they're not there. They're, they are not there um you see shimmer, shimmering and barely visible almost transparent like a very weak veil between um this plane and wherever that portal led to like an arcane uh remnant of their magic interesting um could i investigate that further to figure out where that portal goes or what type of like portal it is um you would have to climb atop this gate onto the upper part of the wall where the individual is standing um because these gates by design were roughly 25 30 feet tall they were very enormous elevators because this is how they were freight elevators this is how all the shipments uh -huh. came up to the upper district from yeah. the lower district yeah uh, Rickett will point at it I think he he grabs Vartash's like uh, jacket sleeve and like start shaking him. Uh, uh, tell, uh, tell, 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 remnants of a teleportation spell. Uh, I, I'm gonna get a closer look. Uh, and I run over to the the gate and start trying to climb it. I'm pretty sure you have like a high passive perception, Vartosh. Varta? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. <coughs> <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. I like <laughs> Vartosh. Am in a stunned silence. No. Now, Vartosh is literally, like, staring at where the explosions just happened and is very, like, shook at the moment. Okay. Uh, so you weren't jostled yeah. to focus on Rickett? I don't... Okay. I mean, I think he heard him, but is just mostly yeah. like... What? <laughs> Nyx and Oswin, what are you doing? Do you Oswin? see Rickett now running towards this gate as well? Oswin has his face is unreadable as usual. And he's kind of like staring down at like what happened and then looking towards the others as if expecting somebody to tell him what to do. And he just kind of goes, oh, what are we supposed to do? Nick standing there just kind of also like in shocks where still looking at the exact spot that figure left and kind of unsure of the situation at this point. I, I don't, I don't really know, um, a uh, friend Oslin, do you know if we should, um, maybe, I don't know, help, help Yavalia, or uh, maybe Rickett seems to know, or... Looks at the catatonic Vartosh standing here and is just like, uh, I don't, Vartosh, are you, are you okay? I, um... He kind of shakes out of it and looks around. Uh, are there any other, Pete, like other townspeople around, like citizens and stuff? Uh, yes. You were all standing in a large gathering of people that came to investigate sure. this commotion when the first explosions were um, heard. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go over to someone that looks important, maybe a guard or whatever. Before you do that, Oswin does one thing to you, noticing that you are somewhat taken aback. Oswin will reach out and place a hand on your shoulder, and he will kind of mutter something, and there will be sort of almost several voices whispering softly behind him in this strange discordant sound, and a very, very soft hush. You'll see a little thread of, like, ghostly vapor move across his arm and into you. And as it does, you feel a little bit of, like, something is with you, helping you, at the moment. Okay. Oswin's hoping that will help still some of the panic or calm in you right now. But out of character, uh, you have a 1d4 for an ability check for the next minute. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, guidance? Okay. Cool. Uh, Ivalia, roll a d20 as you're flailing at this control panel. Ooh, 16. 
So in all your flailing, you do manage to just hit the right lever. Mm -hmm. And you hear the mechanism click as the iron gate shudders for a second and begins slowly raising itself. <laughs> um, can can Ricket be grabbing onto the iron bars already when it starts going up? Uh, um, yes. <laughs> oh, no. So, Ricket, you run <laughs> up and you're like, I need to get up there, is your thought process. So let me climb uh, these iron bars. <laughs> Just as you get your foothold down and begin to take that first um, step up, the, you feel the shudder as the gate slowly just starts picking you up. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 I was not ready. I was not ready. I was not prepared. <laughs> uh oh. That doesn't look very ah. good. <laughs> uh. well, They're heroes. I, I'm sure he'll be fine. The, <laughs> I, I think the Ricket <laughs> might need help. So, yeah, Vartosh, he knows what Someone it is. is it's peeing. just. It still feels a little unsettling, but he's he accepts it. Um, but yeah, he's walking up to like a guard or something. Um, I, what was that? Who who was that? What's going on? Let me see what guard oh, and stop. <laughs> Johnny Lawman. You're the kid that killed that one person. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> you killed my brother! <laughs> as, you, as you go towards one of these guards, you feel your view just get turned to the side. Stop! You violated the law. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Stop right there, criminal scum. It's been two years! <laughs> um, so you stop one yeah, of these what's guards. What's the statute of limitations on that? <laughs> As far as you know, there isn't one. Who knows? <laughs> it's just whether they care about capturing you or not at this point. And if they remember what you look like. It's been two years. Since, yeah. if you recall, the posters hanging up had the goblin <laughs> <laughs> hanging up on them. That's right. And, uh... Yeah, as the side note, um, the wanted posters were all kind of like y'all, but like secondhand information as to what you looked like. The guard you stopped as they have begun, the city guard have begun like cordoning off the area, mm -hmm. uh, are in like battle gear. They are fully armored, like visors down and on alert, ready to fight mm -hmm. as you run up to him and get his attention and he kind of barely even glancing in your direction and almost like shoving you back uh you hear, the, you hear him say if I knew what was going on do you think we'd just be standing around? <sighs> He'll return to Nixon uh uh, Oswin. As you're kind of shrugged off, you hear and see multiple guardsmen running back and forth as orders are being just shouted sure. in almost a chaotic try and contain this. So Yuvalia, who has flipped the switch, seeing is now seeing Ricket go up. How far are we from the, like, edge of this elevator shaft? So when the elevator comes up, mm -hmm. for perspective, and you're standing in it, the gate is further out from you. Oh, so okay. it's not directly up where the elevator is. So gotcha. there's a good uh, 10 feet of space before okay. the gate itself. It's not um, right up on the elevator. <laughs> See Ricket just going up. She's just like... Oh. <laughs> Oh, 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 okay, then. Uh, well, alright. But then goes over to where the, ele like, the, basically, like, the drop happened. Looks over the edge to see what does it look like down there? Is it just, like, a splatter? <laughs> <laughs> what? The best I can describe it, 
from how high up you are is you see the impact itself, the sheer, like, velocity and force of this elevator hitting the ground has almost left what looks like a crater. And it is just shrapnel and exploded pieces of the elevator in every direction from where it hit. That's how fast it was going when it hit the ground. You don't necessarily see bodies, but you can see that there is the blood, like, splatter. I don't, I don't think anybody made it out of that. I stop, look, turn back around towards where all my friends are, and walk slowly back with, like, wide eyes. I, I don't think anybody made it out of that drop. I don't know who would have done this. I don't either, but things have gotten real bad in the city I am. Um, I know. I, last time I played here, she looks around. I don't know what we can do at this point. Looks like Ricketts heading up to where that person was. I don't know. Maybe my father can help. He's been dealing with the political situation, so... Wait, your father left. Where'd he go? He, he wouldn't have been on that elevator, would he? Did he say where he was going? <laughs> he said he was... He said he had a meeting, right? He he had a meeting, yes, that's what it was. I mean, he didn't say um, where. So. Now, when... When you were in the... The parlor... Area... And talked to him... He then had... Uh, another meeting that he mm. went to attend. Okay. He wasn't going to the lower district. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. There was cool. he was not going to get on an elevator. He was okay. going, uh, just to another meeting of, like, political council. Sure, meeting. sure. Okay. Uh, I. And that's when the explosions happened. I don't think so. He he had a meeting up in up here, somewhere. Well, that's good then, I guess. Um, I guess let's wait for Rickett and then regroup. I, I don't know what the answers are here. I, I barely even know what's going on. I, I don't either. Rickett, you should probably hurry. Looks like they're starting to shut this place off. And they might not like that we're here. Uh, maybe. I doubt they remember. The person who gave the speech, they had some sort of thing that looked like the uh, symbol that the, the the original party members had, right? Um, yes, that they had right. what Nix and Oswin and everyone else has associated as being the mark of the hero on this mask they were wearing. Right. That same exact um, symbol. Uh, Rickett Yes. Give me an athletics check. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Knew this was coming. <laughs> Let's go. As you hear uh, Vartosh call out to you, hurry up. I rolled a 14. Okay. Um, so you managed to traverse this moving gate and get a foothold on top of the wall um, just below where this individual was standing and you are um, about 10 feet away from these arcane remnants of the spell or magic that they cast. Yeah, so when Rickett was down on the ground, uh, I think... The, at, the thought of him climbing up here is not so terrifying, but now that he's up there, you know, hanging on these bars, kind of extended above open space, uh, he's quite frightened. It is, you are high up enough and there's not as much, like, wind breakage that you can feel that, like, swaying with the mm. wind pushing you mm. as you put one hand to, like, hold on to your hat. Okay, Rickett, this is. Uh, we are a, 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 a brave investigator. Just like uh, 
Pike Castle. Uh, we can do this. And he's going to try to determine this... Uh, what's going on with this arcane aura that was left behind. Uh, so give me an arcane check. Arcana. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, that is a 15. Um, so as you're walking up and getting closer to this remnant, from a distance, it looked very ethereal and translucent. The closer you get to it, it seems to be solidifying itself. And as you get up to it and begin investigating it, it has this almost stained glass look to where the portal was, the exact size of it. And looking through it and channeling some of your own arcane magics, muttering little incantations to try and identify this type of magic, from your teachings, you can tell that this is magic of the Conjuration School of Magic, but whatever spell was cast and the essence they drew their magic from is old and ancient. Interesting, interesting. Hmm. Hmm. And while you're doing this investigation, you glean this information and you om- you have this instinctual connection to want to touch this, seeing this physical, almost stained glass window in front of you you reach out with your hand and you notice the mark on your hand that symbol you have is glowing with the soft blue and touching all of the rest of you don't see this remnant that he's talking about you see uh, Rickett just kind of investigating and fawning at the air and doing some kind of arcane ritual as he reaches out and touches the glass Rickett there is this resonance and just saw as the rest of you see almost a door like stained glass picture form in front of Rickett or sins of the father about to jump in. He also has a stained glass. We're about to jump into the Disney world. It's fine. Show <laughs> uh, this keyhole. Real Next quick. can become and a real Disney happens, princess. <laughs> <laughs> as that happens, you all notice Ricket as well. That soft blue glow you had, Ricket, is now almost you would say shedding bright light around you. It is glowing that intensely are our marks glowing or just Rickett just Rickett's okay as you all kind of like glance for the mark and it's uh, Oswin's eye glowing eyes cut to uh, Nyx with a uh, are you seeing this shit <laughs> <laughs> should we go up there her looking at him and being like, uh... <laughs> I, I don't think any of that it's was magical. audible. <laughs> I think it was just <laughs> wild gesturing. <laughs> Nyx is just basically having a manic panic over here of looking at this crap. Should we go up there? We should make a decision quickly. Those marks will likely draw the attention. If the guards notice that they're similar, you guys could get in trouble. Yeah, Vartosh runs up as well. Ricket. Yeah. Does it look like this door will open? Um, it's not like a door door. Uh huh. But it is like that arcane resonance you're having with it. Mm-hmm. You feel like if you pushed it. I say pushed it with air quotes. <laughs> yeah. Using arcane magic 
you feel this connection to be able to open whatever this uh, window is. And as Oswin said that, about people noticing the marks, and you all begin, like, <laughs> heading towards Rickett, you hear, like, a commotion as people are pointing up at Rickett and shouting that he has the mark. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Very as good. from the angle he's standing at touching it, you see just that blazing symbol on his hand. Oh, God. I'm booking it. I'm getting up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm booking it up to, to, up to him. Uh, Oswin, realizing that attention's going to be drawn there, like, thinks for a moment, and, like, as people are tr- tr- starting to turn their attention towards that, he gives a wave of his hand, gestures back behind where a lot of the guards and people are, He's going to cast ghost sounds, and he's going to make the sound of a horrendous wraith from behind oh, no. everybody. <laughs> as he runs towards it to distract the people. So, Oswin, you're running towards the sound after you make it? No, he is going to run towards Rickett as well. Okay, just one in. Else. But he is, he's basically throwing a distraction <laughs> in that Fair direction. Enough. Like, don't focus on me, I'm going to go over... Like, don't pay attention to what we're doing over <laughs> here. Don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Episode 3 of Sins of the Father, Season 2. I'm your Dungeon Daddy, Jackson Chandler. I won't keep you long, but I just want to remind you that we are on the way to hitting $500 a month on Patreon, which will allow us to provide our editors with a pay raise to say thank you for all the incredible effort they pour into making our shows shine. Don't forget to support us on iTunes. If you leave us a review, send us a copy of it to misconceptionspod at gmail.com to receive a free Sins of the Father decal. That's all I have for now, so let's jump into the next episode of Sins of the Father, Season 2. this just soul shattering screech behind you using your magics and run towards the rest of your friends you hear a large majority of the crowd turns and like screams and starts you know making a commotion and there's a panic in this crowd now as on one side they have whatever just happened with this attack, and on the other side they have what sounds like a wraith or some kind of apparition haunting these people. Oh my gosh. And you hear the guards rushing towards that sound, and one of them stops, and this is all just within those seconds of you casting the sound, and pulls from his mm-hmm. belt a horn and blows it. Have I? Just, <sighs> oh no. And you hear in the distance the sound of metal as something is moving towards you. Oh boy. Oh. Time to leave town again. And Sorry, you, Jackson. You begin running. <laughs> to, I'm gonna leave. Time to leave. Bye, Harvey. I, I like five minutes. Literally <laughs> today was like sitting at work was like. This is going to be season one again. No. They're going to have to leave the city. No, we got to hide in the city. That's more fun in this one. Yeah. 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 I was like, 
If it happens, it happens. This season's gonna be I'll way more grounded. The... Hiding the bright pink girl and the giant, you know, metal man are gonna be very you just hard. Turn into a rat anytime yeah. we need you to be out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is true. Ricket, Ricket is touching that stained glass resonance, and he says, "I, I, 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 I think it's a door. I, I, I think I can open it." As your friends are all trying to scale this. Yeah, Vartosh is going to climb last. He's keeping an eye on the guards, and if anybody tries to draw a ranged weapon, he's going to chuck it. He's going to shoot it out of their hand. The second, like, how far up is this? Um, the platform, like that, Ricket's on. Um. 30, roughly 30 feet. Yeah. 30 feet? Cool. The second one right there. Uh, Nyx calls out and goes, Benos Mir Sere. And then, like that, she's just gone as like a teleportation of like blossom petals. She just bursts and then she just reappears right on top. Ah! As she just casts Misty Step. <laughs> and looking back at the others, like, well, come on now, hurry up. We haven't got all day now. <laughs> Looking back at the crowd of people who are like freaking out, going, "Oh, that is a uh, that looks really bad out there." Um, uh, should I maybe do something about that going on out there? I don't know. That's a good thing that there's a lot of people freaking out. The horrible race oh. sounds have started emanating from another <laughs> direction. <laughs> we just need to go. About halfway up the wall, she looks back and then lets this whistle out. To, to Cinnamon Bun, because she does not want to leave Cinnamon Bun behind. Uh, so Whoa. this whistle resonates from Ivalia as the camera kind of cuts to the Caltanieth Manor courtyard, where there's a group of servants staring at the buffalo. <laughs> right! That's what you disguised <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Cinnamon as Cinnamon Buns kind of, instead of grazing the grass, walks over to <laughs> the small rock garden, and is just standing over it, scooping up and eating the rocks. And they all <laughs> stare in wonderment as uh, Cinnamon Bun's head kind of perks up, hearing this whistle, and just takes off barreling through the gate to the manor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix it later, it's fine. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. Uh, Oswin will cloak himself uh, to, like, you know, hide his obviously metal visage and everything. Um, so that at the very least, they can kind of recognize his size, but, like, within the chaos, he's hoping that people will be able to pin him exactly. Uh, and he will stop by uh, Vartesh and he will go. If we pretend that we're trying to stop him, we might not be seen as the bad guys in this situation. Maybe. There's a lot of ways we can still spin this. As soon as they see the symbols on Nivoli and I, they're gonna know. I've got that covered, don't worry. Alright. And he will start scaling the thing as well. How tall is this cage thing that we're climbing? 30 feet. 30? 30 feet? God. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, where uh, Ricket and Nyx are standing atop it is 30 feet up. Okay. And at this point, uh, around her waist, uh, she, like, lets down the uh, hempen rope that she has <laughs> wrapped around her. Which is technically hempen rope, but uh, it's actually, uh, you know, vines that she just wraps around her. And just is, like, letting it down to help you guys <laughs> up if she yeah. can. Uh, <laughs> Trying to help assist... As the three of you are climbing up with uh, Ivalia, you're in the front and you're struggling because this is just a wall. You're not used to climbing these. It's got no, like, defined handholds or anything. As just you look up and you see whoop, a vine drop down next to you. And uh, she sees it fall down, like, and then looks up at Nyx and says, Well, oh, thanks, Nyx. And then, um, like, grabs onto it and starts trying to, like, you know, climb it. Uh, there will be no checks for using the vine. <laughs> okay. So you all scale it up in time. Uh, mm -hmm. about the time that, uh, Vartosh gets up with Oswin 
Vartosh, did you let Oswin go first? Uh, or? yeah. Vartosh is staying at the bottom for right now. Okay, yeah. So, uh, Oswin, about the time that you reach the top, Vartosh, you see that the rest of your friends have gone up. You hear kind of this commotion in the crowd as barreling and pushing its way through, you see the buffalo ah, yes. cinnamon buns <laughs> zoom past all of them pushing people aside <laughs> gets up to the wall and unnatural for a buffalo begins scaling it straight up can i as it's <laughs> as it's <laughs> running <laughs> past the cruthic as it's, the cruthic sorry, is sticking its pincers into oh, the wall God. and climbing up so as you it, see the buffalo <laughs> Just sticking its hooves into the wall. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, as Cinnamon Bun runs past Vartosh, he's gonna do like the Legolas horse whip thing, where he just like grabs around its neck and slides slides around over onto its back, um, and and just ride it up. So using Cinnamon nice. Bun's momentum, blurring past you uh, as you swing onto Cinnamon Bun's back. And they climb up this wall much faster than you would have. Yeah. Upon their arrival at the top of the wall, Yavalia claps Vartosh on the back. You really are a pirate. I saw that. Uh, I mean, I've swung on a lot of ropes lately. <laughs> it was most the best. We need to hurry and go do do something with this portal. Uh, this illusion will only last a uh, moment. Yeah, Ivalia, like. Um, as like as they're walking up, she casts press to digitation to cover parts of the symbol because she can create her you know do a symbol. I know it's like shining really bright, but she makes like another little symbol overlay to it to make it look like slightly different. So anyone else who sees it, that the first people that saw it are gonna know what it was, but anybody else who looks at us now won't see it. Smart. It's like a cardboard cutout of a different mm -hmm. shape, making uh, the light change. Yeah. The shape. <laughs> Oswin is going to reach to his chest and like he's going to kind of hunch over a little bit he'll hold one hand to his chest and something will shine beneath the armor as a mist pours down from his like down against the ground surrounding everybody and he is going to take his uh, weapon this like almost glaive like spear hold it out towards Rickett as if he's like pretend, as if he's about to like try to stop Rickett, and in a voice that is not Oswin's, it comes out of coming from him still. Stop! Wait! No! What are you doing? What are you? And then in a moment, there's a scream ah! as this shat, as these ghostly forms coalesce around the floor, shooting up in all directions and like seem to wrap around in a static image of mist and like sh mist-shaped claws, obscuring what's happening with us. And Oswin will open his, like, he won't open his mouth. He will turn his head up towards the sky and let out a horrific streak. <laughs> oh, no. You would think a soul is escaping him at the uh, moment. So as that's all happening, um, <laughs> Oswin, okay. can y'all see out of it, this mist? We, the, uh, they, if they touch the mist, it will turn into a translucent in state because it's just okay. an illusion. We can see out of it because we're inside the illusion and okay, we've already okay. touched gotcha, it. Gotcha. Dis okay. that, uh, that's it what anyway. I was trying to uh, just make sure. Yeah. As this okay. whole theatric is playing behind you, <laughs> you all see this is going to be a very, like, you quickly have to decide kind of thing. Oh, okay. Walking around the corner, escorted by uh, armed guards are two of the mechanical sentries that, once again, tower these gates as they both sling off their backs in perfect sync large uh, cannon ballistas Oh shoot. and take aim at this mist. <laughs> oh, no! I don't think my pistol bullet's gonna stop that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you see... One of the captains of the guard raise his sword. And Rickett, this is where you have to decide. Open the portal, open the portal. He open points the, portal. the sword forward. Rickett, I hope you know what you're doing. Motion. Yeah. 
he calls that out, and then we go to slow motion as both the ballista bolts fire. Really and truly, Rickett is not freaking out because he's fascinated by this mystery in front of him. So I think Rickett's face is kind of illuminated by the shining stained glass in front of him. He has like a little curious smile on his face, and he just pushes. So we see the camera shift from these ballista bolts mid-air flying towards these um, illusory claws wrapped around the party. As Rickett's hand touches the glass, there is that shock of like arcing energy arcing off of the glass into your mark as the pieces of it don't fly outwards, they fly inwards into the portal as you all feel sucked into the portal. And right as that happens, we see the ballista bolts just straight through and hit nothing as the whole party is gone. <laughs> the, the, after a few seconds, the mist just kind of discorporates and... Huh? Some farmer's gonna have a bad time. Oh god, you're right. With those ballista bolts. Oh god. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Oh god. Yeah. They they about to lose Sorry. some cattle. My cabbages. <laughs> <laughs> Takes off the side of someone's house. It turns out to be Cleveland. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> All of you are sucked into this portal and there's just this blinding white light as you just feel yourself getting like pulled through whatever plane of existence you're currently on before you all feel your feet purchase on the ground in what almost feels familiar to you you see nothing around you as your feet land on the ground there is this soft ripple almost as if you're walking on water but you see pitch black there is no um, discernible features or environment around you, but you can see each other. Alright, where are we? Loot day! <laughs> As this orb of light brightens up into this vast, empty landscape, you would recall the three of you that were there in the, uh, City of Heroes when you went inside of uh -huh. the monster yeah, it's that kind of environment yeah. it is this just mm -hmm. endless sea of black this light is just shining out into the nothing uh, 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 is this re re reminiscent of when we were inside th the monster well, let's hope it's not that Fartosh is just kind of looking out into the darkness. Is there any indication of any direction? Like, any way to get bearings or anything? As you are spinning around looking, you do not see anything. Except for your friends around you. It's not that uh, pitch black. Like, you can't see each other. You can see as if you're in, like, daylight. As Rickett casts this mm -hmm. light spell forward, it's just it's void. just nothing. Okay. Uh, if it's uh, like last time, we just move forward, right? I mean, that's what we did last time. Vartosh is gonna like bend down and tap the ground, and uh, once again, your foot, your boot finds purchase on the ground as there's this rippling effect of like stepping on water. Well, he's gonna, like, bend down and, like, put his hand up to it. Because last time... <laughs> uh -huh. uh, there, there is no evil doppelganger. <laughs> cool, That tries Great. to suck you into the black nothing. Yeah. That's nice. Well, uh, I mean, this is at least better than, you know, giant things attacking us. I mean, we'll see if that's true. <laughs> and like Ivalia suggested, the only 
plan that you guys came up with last time was just walking forward. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, could I ask a favor? Uh, uh, uh yes, uh, uh, Oswin. Uh, Oswin will hold up his, uh, staff, and it will change and shift form into that of a bow, and he will draw an arrow back, and it will reveal, like, this very smooth, uh, bow made of, I mean, arrow made of ivory. The spell you just cast, can you touch the arrowhead? Um, uh, um, sure. Uh, I tap the arrowhead and that globe of light around my the tip of my wand transfers to the tip of that arrow shaft okay let's see how far this darkness extends and he aims it up at an arc and fires off that arrow with a light spell attached to it far 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 into the darkness so he uh, Oswin shoots this arrow and you see it traveling and then it just just disappears at some point flying through the air out of your sight I cast light again Lutney it seems we've got some walking to do I mean at least we know there's an end it's not like you fired it and it just like stuck into a giant eyeball that showed up <laughs> <laughs> there are worse things that could have happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've always like gonna hop on Cinnamon's back and just start trucking that like Oh yeah, Vartosh is still sitting on Cinnamon's <laughs> back. Oh yeah, now now, <laughs> he wrote him now we're riding together on Cinnamon then. <laughs> awesome. Vartosh is sitting behind. He'll he'll put his arms around Vaya's waist and just ride cinnamon bun with her. While we're, I'm assuming everyone's walking now, right? We're all gonna mm. go that direction and walk. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine mm -hmm. they're just a tiny bit ahead of everybody, and Valia kind of like leans her head back and looks around at at her friend and says, "Vartosh, I I know this isn't really the time, but uh, you made some real cool new friends, didn't you?" I mean, yeah, they're pretty cool. Oswin's... Honestly, Oswin scared me at first. I'm still not quite sure what's up with him, but... He's... he's got a heart of gold. And Nyx... Nyx is just... I don't know. There's something about Nyx I can't put my finger on, but... Anyway... She's a little weird. You spent a lot of time with him, huh? Little while. Well, they were on the boat for a few months with me. I don't. I don't know how Rickett feels about it, but um, it just um. I guess I'm kind of worried that maybe you spent longer with them than you did with us, and maybe. Maybe we're not so important anymore. Oh yeah. There's room for more than two people with me. And you two are really the first friends I ever had. And Yabba. Wherever he is. Well... Um... Good. I just, um... They're so cool. You know? <laughs> And, uh, it just seems like a lot to measure up to. <laughs> You're cool. Do you see what we're riding on? You raised this thing. You killed a man with psychic energy. You're pretty cool. But I'm not a big robot or a... Very... Pink... Girl who can make flowers, so... I mean, pink's always been my least favorite color. <laughs> she, uh... <laughs> Aww. He just kind of squeezes you a little tighter around the waist. She, she, um, like, puts her, like, pats, pats 
uh, Vartasha's arms, like just very <laughs> like lightly. Thanks, thanks, friend. I um missed you a lot. I guess. I miss you too. Cut over to <laughs> the other group as they're like walking, and they're just like walking behind this, and all of a sudden it's like, Choo! I think somebody just said they hate me. <laughs> 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 Who dares? <laughs> um, that the, the, the portal we came through w- w- was left by whoever uh, did these things. Uh, p- presumably, uh, there's uh, the, the, we are an entry point. There must be an a- exit point. We just have to find it. Uh, also, did anyone else notice? And he like gestures to his face. Their mask? Yes, it resembled the mark that you had. I don't remember if I noticed. Everyone that. noticed. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of, um, uh, avoiding that topic. I think that this symbol means more than we thought. I'm not sure. I don't know why he has that, though. He shouldn't have it. He's not a hero. I mean, he doesn't have it on him. It's only on the mask as far as we know. Well, he shouldn't be wearing it. Does this symbol even mean hero? It just showed up. This is an interesting question. Did I ever see this symbol on my father? (laughs) Yes, at one point, yes. They did have it. (laughs) They don't any longer, though? They don't any longer after... You would notice after the uh, incident where they were wounded. Interesting. Uh, it, 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 it must 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 mean heroes. It was on, on our fathers. It is connected to to the murals we saw before we reached the city of heroes. It, it, it means hero hero. They're just misappropriating it. Well, of course they're misappropriating it. I hope so. I mean... Do you know something, Nyx? Well, sort of. Not a whole lot, honestly. I mean, it's kind of... Not really a lot I was ever told. Um... It's kind of hard to explain. But sort of a bit about it being something connected to heroes or something... My mother told me once about it a few times. What about this place here? You said you've seen something like it before, right? Uh, yes, inside of the creature that we fought. I, I told you about that. The We entered through some portal and found ourselves in a place much like this. Oh, uh, It's where we found its heart. Before the betrayer came. It's hard. Yeah, I I know you told us some parts yes. of this, Vartage, but um, I mind going back over some of the details? I think you left parts of it out. Um, I don't really like thinking about it. It was not the most. I mean, it wasn't very fun. As you start to talk about it, Yavalia shivers. But you're the only one who notices because you're a dragonborn and much bigger than everyone else and probably yeah. blocking her from view. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was gonna say Rickett shudders whenever uh right. Ivalia mentioned the betrayer, he kinda shuddered a little. But we found ourselves in a place sort of like this. And there was this crystal floating on a platform. And then there were these evil versions of us that tried to break through and drag us down beneath the floor. It was honestly quite terrifying. If this sort of mark of the hero is secret knowledge, known only to a few, then it's possible that this cult might be associated with the only other individual that you've mentioned who seems to be aware of it. Uh, Oh! That, that that is uh, uh, an insightful d- d- deduction, Oswin. Thank you. Who else knows? I don't get it. What do you mean? Uh, what, what 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 if the masked uh, terrorist is, is somehow connected 
to the betrayer. Well, what? The betrayer wanted power. I mean, most of their motives were unknown, but do we really think that that person would be... I don't know. My father once taught me, uh, if you want to destroy a hero, one of the most effective ways is to destroy their reputation. Yvalia leans out and leans around Vartosh to look <laughs> to to look back at Oswin. <laughs> your your father said what? That if you want to destroy a hero, you destroy their reputation. Why would your father know about destroying heroes? Well, everybody's the hero of their own story. So sometimes good people come into conflict with one another. And sometimes, well, almost convenient for Oswald that that <sighs> happened. <laughs> <laughs> you all are distracted from that current conversation as you hear, almost coming from all of you around you, this echoing chorus of multiple voices that sound ethereal and distant whispering as you make out they're here you can sense them the old blood Vartosh like draws his pistol <laughs> you all heard that right uh, yeah. yes um, hello and there's that echoing reply hello hello they sound as if they're slowly getting closer in proximity. As these voices are continuing to whisper about your group. Uh, we don't want any trouble. Really, um, I, I don't I don't want anything today. Really, no, no thank you though. <laughs> Rickett, are you panicking? Uh, yeah, Rickett's panicking. Rickett is, like, scooting towards the middle of the group, probably close to Cinnamon Bun. <laughs> I imagine he is, like, in the middle, flanked one side as next and one side as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Vartosh has his gun in one hand, and uh, Adelaide, his, his little flying snake, is, like, wrapped around his thumb, and he's just kind of holding her tightly for comfort. Nix looks at uh, Ricket, who's kind of like, doesn't look the happiest, and is like, oh, Don't worry, Ricket, it's okay. Uh, if anything comes our way, I'll just turn into a giant axolotl again. That brings me little comfort. <laughs> Don't worry, it's really effective. I mean, I haven't really fought a whole lot, though. Nix, as you look towards Ricket and say that, you see that uh, that symbol on Ricket's hand is pulsing brighter. Um, not to alarm you, Ricket, but, um, I think your hand is, um, pulsing. Uh, oh? I look at it. Why is it just you? Yeah, I look at my hand. Is my hand changed? <laughs> your hand is not. <laughs> hmm. Um, uh, maybe it's because he touched that weird energy first or something? I, I don't know, really. I thought these was, uh, were all connected. They always glowed together before. What's... I don't understand. Well, Vartosh and Ivalia would realize that it's no longer that same white glow. There is that arcane blue, like Rickett's magic, in his symbol. Mm. As Rickett, your pulse is quickening and that panic is setting in, it begins flashing faster and faster on your hand as you see small tendrils of that arcane energy and glyphs begin climbing up your arm, slowly. Ah, uh, uh, what, what, what's happening? Did you see this? What is this? I have no clue. Oswin is like uh... panicking between looking at you <laughs> and like trying to ward off whatever might come at us. 
Okay, um, this was never actually told to me. I don't really know anything about this. Um, Try to shake it off. Ah! I start shaking my arm. What is your shaking um, this hand? Does it look like it's hurting him? He's looking at Ricket. He does not look in pain. Uh, hurts but Rickett. he is his to Avalia and Vartosh. His usual ball mm-hmm. of anxiety. <laughs> yeah, and panicking is setting him. Yeah. He looks fine, just as normal. <laughs> and, <laughs> the camera. Oswin, has okay. got his like bow turned back into the sword. Do you need me to cut it off, Ricket? No, God, please. <laughs> <laughs> Ricket, calm down. What what does it feel like? It feels like that same wellspring of energy that you uh, build up every time you are casting magic of your stronger spells. Mm-hmm. And as you're waving this hand, the camera cuts to Ricket, waving his hand as there is this just flick of your hand and a pulse of magic lights up on the ground around you in that same stained glass as you all feel weightless and lift off the ground and looking down you see this uh, stained glass symbol of the mark on your hand Ricket and Avalia and Bartosh as the floor shatters below you and you all are sucked in End of episode. Spicy. Oh! Spicy. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Next episode will be released on April 11th. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Sins of the Pod. If you weren't aware, we have a Discord channel for the Misconceptions Podcast Network where you can chat about your favorite shows and anything else nerdy with all of the crew and other friends of the show. We also launched a merch store where you can fulfill all of your nerdy misconceptions and sins of the father needs. Just go to misconceptionspod.com to check out everything we have to offer. If you need to contact us, you can send us an email to misconceptionspod at gmail.com. Sins of the father is only possible thanks to y'all, so we'd appreciate it if you would spread the word about our show if you enjoy it. If you're feeling especially generous, you can always donate to us through our Patreon page. However you decide to help out, we greatly appreciate it. Sins of the Father is an actual play podcast using the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition role-playing game by Wizards of the Coast. The Sins of the Father theme was composed by Aaron Wharton. You can find more of his music at aaronwharton.net. Sins of the Father is part of the Misconceptions Podcast Network. That about covers it for now, and as always, keep rolling crits. Put on my card again, my old lady shirt. Let, let me put on my card again. <laughs> well, Ashes. hold on, kiddies. Watch Before out, we young man. I'm goblin ass. I gotta put on again. my card again. <laughs> Got my card again on. <laughs> <laughs>